guys, I'm Thunder and today we're going to be creating a crouching system for a character controller. So you can see here if I press the C key, I go into the crouching idle and if I move around, the guy moves on crouching and it even has a footstep sound for it. So let's go ahead and get started. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Unity's default third person character controller, which you have to link down in the description, but this can be easily applied to any character controller that you're using. The first thing that we're going to do is go over to our player armature game object and over here, we're going to scroll down over to where it says Starter Assets Input, right click, Edit Script. On our script, the first thing is going over here and we're going to add another public pool called Crouch. Then scroll down over here and the Unsprint function, go ahead and copy it, paste it again, and we're going to change the name to Uncrouch. Then scroll down and the Sprint Input function, go ahead and do the same thing. Only difference is we're going to name it Crouch Input. Inside this function where it says Sprint, change it for crouch and I'm gonna rename this boolean to new crouch state. Go ahead and copy the rename boolean and put it over here. Now scroll over here to the uncrouch function and where it says sprint input we're gonna swap it for crouch input. Now with this being done we can move on to the next script. Once more in unity go ahead and select your player armature and go over to where it says third person character controller. Right click edit script. On this script we're going to begin by selecting the public float move speed and we're gonna duplicate it and we're gonna rename it from move speed over to crouch speed. I will also give it a default value of one. Then scroll down and find this section where it says player. Under it, we're going to create a header, which we're going to call crouching. Then go ahead and create a serialized private float, crouch height. Give it a default value of 1.2. Next, go ahead and create a serialized private vector called crouch center. We're going to set this to be equal to new vector three then we're going to do parentheses for the first value we're going to pass 0 comma then we're going to do 0 0.595 adding f at the end comma 0 then go ahead and add a serialized private float called crouch speed i'm going to give it a default value of 7 this will be the speed at which your collider uh, transitions from standing over to crouching then go ahead and add a private float called stand height leave it as it is we do not need to give it a value then go ahead and create a private vector 3 called stand center then create a private pool called crouched. Now let's go over to our start function down here. And at the end, I'm just gonna make a comment here, call it crouch values. And over here, we're going to say stand center equals underscore controller dot center and stand height equals underscore controller dot height. Basically what we're doing here is we're setting the stand center and height to the current controller center and height. That way we don't have to configure this manually then we'll just assign the values for crouching manually on the editor. Before we continue, let's go ahead and scroll down after the move function. And over here, we're going to create a private void, which we're going to call update controller collider. Inside this function, we'll go ahead and first create a local vector three called target center. And this is going to be equal to the stand center by default. Then go ahead and create a float target height, which is going to be equal to stand height by default. Then we're gonna check if crouched. And inside here, if we're crouching, we're going to assign both the center and the height to be the crouch center and the crouch height. Then at last, what we're gonna do is we're going to lerp or controller height and center to the target height and center. So for that, we're gonna do underscore controller dot height equals mathf dot lerp parentheses. And for the first value, we're going to pass the current controller height to do underscore controller dot height. Then we'll pass the target height and then we'll do another comma and we're going to do crouch speed and we're going to multiply by time that delta time down here we're going to do underscore controller dot center equals vector three dot alert parentheses for the first value we'll pass the current value so underscore controller dot center comma and we'll pass the target center then we'll go ahead and pass the crouch speed times time that delta time now we can go back to our update function over here, the first thing that we're going to do is first we'll execute the update controller collider. Then we're going to do an if, and for this we'll do underscore input. So over here we're accessing the starter assets input script that we modified earlier. And for this we're going to do dot crouch. So if the crouch input was toggled, then we're going to do crouch. When we're saying this crouch, we're referring to the crouch state that we created over here on top. Then we're going to make this be equal the opposite of crouch. So we're making a toggle. And then we're going to consume the input for crouching so that it is no longer pressed. So we're going to do underscore input dot crouch equals false. 
The next step is to properly select our speeds. So what we're gonna do is scroll over to the move function. And over here, I'm not going to explain this too much in depth. It's basically a nested if statement. So if input.sprint, so if, uh, then we're going to do sprint speed. Else, we're gonna do move speed. So over here, what we're gonna go ahead and do is else, and we're gonna do another nested if. So what we're gonna do is crouched question mark. So if crouch, else if crouch, then we're gonna do crouch speed. Okay, something very important here. We have the crouch speed for movement and the crouch speed. So what we're gonna do is here, I have the one with the lowercase selected. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna rename the crouch speed for the transition to crouch transition speed. So right click on it, rename, and we're gonna do crouch transition speed. This will automatically rename it throughout the entire project. So just hit apply over here to the top right. Then down here, we're just gonna do crouch speed. Then we'll do else move speed. So basically what we're saying here is, if we're, we're pressing the sprint button, so if input that sprint, then we'll select the speed. Else, if we're crouching, we'll select the crouch speed. Else, we'll select the move speed. Then the next step that we need to do is, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna do if underscore input that sprint, we're going to set crouch to be false because we want the sprint button to override the crouching. The next step is to go over here, all the way down where it says, if it's not has animator, and we're going to update one variable for the animator, which we'll add later on. So we're gonna do underscore animator dot set bool parenthesis and inside here we're gonna do quotes and we're gonna pass the name of the boolean this is very important that you remember exactly what you write even capitals and lower cases i'm gonna write it crouched then after the quotes we're gonna do comma and we're gonna pass the crouched boolean we're about done we only have two more steps left with the code so now you're gonna scroll down over to jump and gravity and down here we're basically going to go to the if input dot jump and we're going to add another end so we're gonna do end end and we're going to do exclamation sign. Basically, the exclamation sign means the opposite of underscore animator dot is in transition parentheses, and we're gonna pass inside the parentheses zero. So we're checking if we're making a transition on the layer zero, because if we are, we do not want to jump again. This is basically to avoid a visual bug that happens when you're crouching and press the jump button multiple times. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab this code inside here and copy it. And we're gonna do if is not, so exclamation sign, crouched, and then paste the code in here. Then we're gonna do else if crouched. Then we'll just set crouched to be equals to false. One more thing that we need to do is over here, we want to consume the jump input. So we're gonna do underscore input dot jump equals false. Over in Unity, we need to do two more things. Number one is set up our input for crouching. And number two would be set up the actual animator for the crouching animations. So first, let's do the input. Select your player armature once more and scroll all the way down to where it says player input. And on the actions, click on it. It will take you to the actions mapping and double click on it to open it. Then over here, you can see we only got sprint, jump, and the movement and look. So we're gonna go over here to the top right and click on the plus sign. And we're gonna call this crouch. This is very important. It needs to be exactly as we wrote it, except for the on. So remember we wrote on crouch, then we just take the on away and do crouch. Otherwise the system will not detect it. Now go ahead and open it up. We're going to add a new binding. For this, I'm going to select the C key from the keyboard. And then I'm going to go ahead and add another binding, which I already added here. So for the path, we're gonna do gamepad button east, which would be circle on PlayStation or B on Xbox. Go ahead and click over here on save asset, close it. And now if you go ahead and hit play, you can see over here that when I press the C key, the collider on the scene view, it's actually adapting. So that means we're actually crouching and it's working. So let's go ahead and set up the animations for it. The next step for D would be to open up the player animator. So I'll select player armature and where it says starter assets third person, click on it. And over here is the animator plus the animation. So double click on it to open it up. The number one thing that we want to do is select parameters and we're going to click the plus sign and we're going to add a parameter of type boolean. We're going to name it crouched. Remember to write it exactly as you wrote it on the code. This is the way I wrote it. Once you have the crouch boolean, what we're going to go ahead and do is drag it here and we're going to select this blend tree and we're going to duplicate it. Go ahead and drag it here and I'm going to rename it to crouch idle and crouch walk. Once you've renamed it, the first thing that we need to do is make the transitions for it. So right click on the state, make a transition over to the default state, 
then make another one from there over to crouch idle and crouch walk. Then we're going to make another transition from jump land over to the crouch state. And we're going to make two more transitions from the crouch state. One's going to be over to in air and the other one is going to be over to jump start. I'll extract this so we can see all the transitions. Now from the jump land to crouch state transition over here, what we're going to do is on the conditions, select this and we're going to do crouched and make sure that it says true over here. Then on the jump land to idle run, we're going to select it and on the conditions, we're going to do crouch false. Then select the transition from crouch state over to in air. We're going to remove the exit time and we're going to add the free fall state. So if free fall is true, then we'll go over to in air. And this one over here, all we got to do is add a condition and that condition is going to be the jump. So if, tr if jump is true, then you'll go ahead and do that. Also for this transition, go ahead and remove the exit time. For the jump plan, uh, we need the exit time. This one we don't. And these two, we also don't need the exit time. Plus we need to add the conditions. So go ahead and disable the exit time, add the condition and from the one that goes from crouch to idle, we're gonna make this so crouch is false. And on the other one, same thing, remove exit time. But in this case, crouch is true. Perfect. Now go ahead and double click and go into the crouch state. And inside here right now, we're using the walk animations. So what we're going to do is we're going to import a few animations from Mixamo, which I have already downloaded. I will leave a link to download them in the description. So let's go ahead and import that. So I've imported my animations. All I did was put them on a separate folder. So go ahead and select them both now. And on the rig tab, go ahead and change the animation type to be humanoid and click apply. Then just select one of them, go over to the animation tab, and you're going to enable loop time and bake into pose for root transform rotation. Now, the reason that we need to give it an offset is because otherwise, this is what it will look like when we play. For some reason, that happens for this crouch animations with Mixamo, so we just gotta add that offset. We're gonna do negative 45. Then, we're gonna do the exact same process over for the walk. Make sure to click on save. Once we've done this, the next step would be to go ahead and select your crouch walk animation and open it up. And you're going to see the clip here. Okay, make sure to click save. You're going to see this clip. What you want to do is do control D and this will duplicate it. The reason we're doing it is because when it's inside the FBX, we cannot actually go ahead and modify it. And we need to modify it to add the footsteps to it. So now that we have that animation, what we're going to do is over here on the blend tree, make sure you're in the crouch idle and walk. Then we only got idle, we only need idle and walk. So select this other one and delete it. Just go ahead and delete it. And for the walk, we're going to assign crouch walk and we're going to assign the crouch idle for the idle. Now go back to the scene view and select your player armature, go into animation. Okay, so in case you cannot see the animation tab, what you're going to do is over here on your project window, you will go over here to the three dots, click on them. You will go to add tab and you will click on animation and this will automatically open a new animation tab. And we're going to go over to Crouch Walk. You can see that Crouch Walk is the only one that doesn't say read only. So that means that we can actually modify it. So the next step is to actually add the events for the footsteps. So drag it over and in my case, I'm going to add the first footstep event over on 13. So go ahead and click over here. And once you got the footstep event, you can see it there, click on it. And on function, we're going to do third person controller methods and we're going to find on footstep. I'm going to do the next footstep over here. Now, in your case, what I recommend if you have your own animation, just drag it through the slider, see where the feet actually lands and where the animation should go. The last thing to do, which I actually forgot, is over on the animator on the blend tree, the threshold, we have it set to two. This has to be one because that's the speed that we're using for the crouch speed. If you have a faster speed set over on your player controller, over here, crouch speed, whatever this value is, just put it over here. Now with this being said, we are fully completed and we're ready to test. In our game, if I go ahead and press C, you can see my character goes into crouching, he's moving, and if I try running, he will go out of crouching. And for the idle, it uses the crouching animation. So with this, our character controller can now crouch. So if you guys liked the video, consider subscribing, hit the like button, comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.